starting a business from scratch, getting ready to go. Let me share some of my frustrations with you. I've created the LLC. I've got the business checking and I'm trying to find a spot because before I get my dealer's license, I got to have a spot and commercial real estate on a smaller level is just, I mean, it's being snapped up. So that's really frustrating because essentially I'm ready to get this thing started. And there's all of these procedures, little hiccups, little things. So I'm just looking at it from the standpoint of me knowing how to start businesses. Because starting an internet business is so much simpler. So much simpler. I could just come up, I can go out and buy a domain name. I actually bought, funny, fun, 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 fun fact. MagDaddyAutos.com is already gone. And they bought it this month. And I don't remember if I actually um, said that, but someone bought it. So I just bought the domain MacDaddyAutosLLC.com. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm not gonna pay you, player, to use a domain name. I mean, I, I hate people who do things like that because <clears throat> they're gonna sit on that domain name and this stuff's probably going to uh, disappear at some point and I'll just scoop it up later if I want it. But it's frustrating to really want to get started because essentially I'm going to buy my first car today. I'm going to get that out the way. And then I'm going to put it on the platform and I'm going to get it inspected. And then I got to buy a GPS tracking system. This is one of the additional steps. So uh, I found some on Amazon, which means I gotta talk to someone. I'm gonna talk to my connect about it because he, he has a buy here, buy, he has a buy here, pay here. And I'm gonna talk to him about the GPS system and getting it installed. And once I get it installed, then I'm going to put the car on the platform. Um, might buy two cars today. Uh, I, got a, I got a theory, I don't know. So we're gonna get that done. We're gonna get the first car today and we're going to, this, this is something else too. You know, with the whole getting started, cause like I said, I know what I'm doing. I know the steps. LLC, business banking, um, I need a physical location, looking for that. That is a trip. And that's the hold up because for the last 12 years, I've been starting internet businesses and it's just like boom, boom, boom. Domain name, website, online training platform. And I'm up and running and I'm just used to moving much faster. And I'm still having this trying, I'm playing phone tag with the city of Sandy Springs zoning. Every time I call, he, he never answers. He'll call me back an hour or two later. And I'm just sitting there like, so I can only imagine the frustration you guys have trying to start a business. Because essentially, let me tell you what my goal is. And this is why I'm buying cars today. My goal is to have 30 cars by June 1st. That's, that's, that's D-Day. So, I, I mean, I'm gonna have to buy two to one cars a day, most of May. And that's why I'm gonna probably go out and get two cars today and maybe two cars tomorrow to, to kind of get a stump because essentially, To get this thing going, I gotta get cars. 
And to get this thing going, I gotta properly set up my car with the GPS tracking. Um, to get this thing going, I got a lot of little things I gotta do. And also, the used car market is crazy. Like in my video, like this this place that has these wonderful donuts. They haven't had them since COVID. COVID is making many things more challenging, making things more um, interesting. COVID is making things more interesting. Um, very, very interesting in terms of growing a business, um, setting up a business. And right now, this is what's funny because Hertz, Avis, they liquidated all their cars at the beginning of the pandemic. Now they don't have enough rental cars for people who want to rent them. So rentals on the Toro are exploding. Exploding. But whole thing is, let's talk about the getting started process. First thing is, I recommend, you know, because many people will recommend that you actually research the business model, which I kind of did, but you got to get your LLC, you got to get your business checking, got to get that out the way, then you got to get started. Um, getting started, because I should have my first car on the platform sometime in May. <laughs> I'm saying sometime in May. Because now I got to depend on other people. Like I gotta find someone to install this GPS switch. I don't know who does that. So I gotta call around, uh, figure that out. And then is this something they can do in a day? Or am I gonna have to leave the car with them? You know, because essentially every car that I buy, I got to take through this process. So I just can't go buy a car. Well, I could buy a car. Um, and this is something I could buy a car and slap it on the platform. And this is something that the Turo people, they, they really never talk about the GPS system. Um, is just get a car, slap it on the platform, and let it roll, which I could do, but uh, I don't know all that. Because essentially, I'm going to sell these cars later. So if it already has a GPS system on it, I don't have to install that when I put it up for sale. So um, I got to buy those. And then when you go to Amazon, the people who are selling them, they only have like a handful. So buy the cars, talk to my connect, and hopefully I will have my, and I also got to have the um, inspection because uh, these cars are going to be for Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, and something else that I'm going to do. I'm going to start running ads on Craigslist. I got to crank up the Craigslist marketing system. It's like, hey, um, and direct them to hire a car because once again, until, because here's something that's really cool. If I could buy a $2,000 car and I could rent it out for 20 bucks a day at $600 per month, the car will be paid for in three and a half months, right? A lot of people could do 20 bucks a day. 20 bucks a day is 600 bucks a month, right? Um, the, the big issue with that is the insurance. Because if I rent this car out and they get in an accident. Now, a way that I could backdoor this and essentially I would not do this with State Farm. State Farm is my uh, homeowner's insurance, my you know, insurance from other two cars. 
I would go out and I'm, I'm thinking about doing this. I'm thinking about going out, getting uh, the general, get the general insurance and save some time and money, get the general, get full coverage on the car, okay? And rent it out gypsy style. So if someone gets in an accident, um, hey, my friend was driving the car. I'm really thinking about doing that because if I rent out the car for 20 bucks a day that way, right? And have the car in my name, have the car insured, and they're just renting it, right? Um, here's the math on that. $20,000 gets me um, 10, 10 $2,000 cars, 10. And um, 40,000 gets me 20. So let's say I go out and I get 20 $2,000 cars, right? And I'm renting them for 20 bucks a day, which is $400 per day times 30 is $12,000 per month. And this is like local rentals because I'm really thinking about doing this and you know, I might get in trouble. I don't know. And then the $10,000 cars, um, cause this is how I'm going to split the money. I'm going to take, um, 10,000, a hundred thousand and buy 10,000, 10, $10,000 cars. And those are going to be for the Uber drivers because when I try to um, find cheap cars, the miles, man, the miles, 160, 180, 200, 250. Um, so that's what they already have on them. And if I rent them to an Uber driver who's going to put like, 30, 40,000 miles. I don't know what the average Uber driver puts on their cars. But so if I buy a car for 160, an Uber driver rents it for a year, um, it's going to have 190. And the resell on that is going to be kind of deplorable, right? So the $10,000 cars. They're gonna have less mileage. So we will see, we, we will see because also the $10,000 cars are gonna be 2012s, 2014s. So they're only gonna be 10 years old because uh, Uber car has to be, it could be 15 years or older. So like someone goes ahead gets one of my cars, starts doing Uber, and they, they can have that car for four years. Like a 2012, yeah, they can drive that car for four years on the Uber platform before they have to upgrade and switch out. So, um, that's a consideration because I'm going to do Uber drivers, and I'm gonna advertise Instacart and Uber Eats because there's a lot of people out there who are not, they're not driving Uber. Uber and Lyft have driver shortages. In Las Vegas, 50% of the Uber hails go unanswered. So a lot of people are chilling on that government money. They chilling on that government money and they don't want to work. They out. Uh, since the stimulus bump has chilled, I mean, it was crazy. Like going to restaurants, it was also spring break. There was these long waits. Um, Restaurants are having a challenging time 
hiring people. Um, it's kind of crazy, right? It's kind of crazy what's going on. Um, so we're getting into this because I started it when I took my pre-licensing, um, you know, a webinar, seminar. But once again, before I get my license, I gotta have a location. And essentially, this is gonna take a few weeks. Uh, I'm probably not going to be able to apply for my dealer's license until May or June. Because I gotta find a suitable location and it ain't going well. It's not going well. Because essentially, I need to talk to people. And this, this is the thing with dealing with government people. They get paid whether they perform or not. So it's frustrating going from an internet business model where you could just start doing stuff. You could build a platform, you could start a market, you could just like, with the internet business. If I had an ideal for an internet business, say last night, I could wake up today and start implementing just that fast. Can't do that with this business. Um, and then the whole thing with um, Toro and me being disapproved. Like I had no problems with hire car. I had no problems with get around. But for some reason, I don't know what's up with Toro. And also I'm thinking about once I get rolling, I'm going to start renting um, cargo vans and maybe box trucks. Just kind of depends because <coughs> if I can buy a box truck for um, 10,000, I hadn't researched the market yet. And I rent that bad boy out for 500 bucks a week. Five months and box trucks paid for. And then what I can do is, you know, at this point I'll have my dealer's license. And I can like, hey, you wanna buy this truck? Give me $2,000, okay? And then make monthly payments of 500. So you didn't put $1,500 back in your pocket doing the same thing you were doing. So, you know, there, there's all kinds of stuff that's gonna open up to this, but getting started is one of the hardest parts of, you know, starting a business. Because essentially, you know, as someone who once again, who knows how to start a business, who knows the things, um, I'm just impatient because I wanna, I wanna go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I got all of these, not roadblocks, not hiccups, procedural steps that I gotta take to get this thing started. So, I anticipate, because this is why I'm buying a car today, so I know how long it takes me to buy a car, get the GPS on it, and put it on the platform. And once I figure that out, then I can pre-plan, I was like, okay, because I can just go ahead and order, uh, and, but before I start ordering stuff, I gotta talk to some people, like, installing this GPS switch. Because essentially, what, I'm, what I have to do is get a GPS tracker so I can monitor my car and a kill switch that if they don't pay me, I can turn it off. And then I gotta have two sets of keys. Because let's say someone has a car, they stop paying, I turn it off, I go with my second set of keys, pick up my car 
and order another set of keys and keep rolling. Because uh, essentially, you know, especially with the $2,000 car model, because like if the $2,000 car model works and I've got 20 cars out there doing 12,000 a month, um, I mean, I, I think about it. So in three months, three months and a half, I've got my 40K back, okay? And at this point, I could take a $2,000 car, rent it out for 20 bucks a day, and 672. That's a $5,200 profit on a $2,000 spend in, in a year. That's crazy return. So we will see, because like I said, I'm not gonna do this with State Farm. State Farm is kind of expensive. So, you know, like I said, I got my homeowners, I've got uh, my BMW, my Porsche. Uh, fun, here's another interesting fact. State Farm has drone insurance but if you tell them that you're using your drone for business, they will deny you. So if you want to insure a drone with State Farm, you have to tell them it's for recreational use. And it's only like 60 bucks a year, right? And under the personal articles policy, like if something like fun fact, I've lost two drones this year. One, I crashed into a tree. The second one just didn't come back. And DGI offers a drone replacement insurance for, and they give you two drones if you crash them, but you have to send the drone back in. They do not give you, they give you flyaway insurance on the smaller, cheaper drones. The Mavic, they give you flyaway insurance on that, but they don't give you flyaway insurance on the Phantom. So, um, yeah, two drones, five Gs down the drain this year. Um, but yeah, that that's one interesting little fun fact. Also, you know, getting started you have to start where you are with what you have. Let me say that again. You have to start where you are with what you have. Like, I'm gonna buy a car today. I'm going to um, get it insured and essentially what I'm going to do, because, you know, I could, um, I'm going to get full coverage on it. And once I put it on the higher platform, because, you know, let's say I get liability insurance and on the way home, I wreck. Boom, $10,000. $10, $10, down the drain. So what I'm gonna do is get full coverage for the first month, and then the second month, I'm gonna downgrade it to um, liability. Because if I got liability and something happened, that's $10,000 down the drain immediately that you know for because a liability is going to cost me i believe 50 60 bucks a month and full coverage i don't know because essentially what i got to do is when i go buy the car i gotta put it on my state farm insurance policy and then i got to switch it It'll be on my policy for a day or something because essentially I gotta, I gotta go around and shop for insurance. And on Snapchat, 
there was this insurance commercial where you can get full coverage for like 39 bucks a month. So I don't know about that. Uh, I'm going to find out. I'm going to do because I'm going to stay away from the Geico Progress. I don't know. It, it, once again, I got to do the research and figure out how much these bad boys cost. So that's one of the things that I have to do. Uh, I got to do that. And there, there's a lot of moving parts to all of this because my goal is to get the, the 10 cars and see how that goes. The $10,000 car, see how that goes. And my goal is like, I don't really know. It's kind of hard to get information because this is how hire car works. They have protection plans. And the cheapest protection plans, if something happens to the car, the first protection plan, you have a $3,000 deductible. The second protection plan, you have like um, a $2,500 deductible. And the third protection plan, I think you have like no deductible, I'm not sure, or it's like 500 bucks. So this tells me that in the Mac Daddy Auto Business checking account, I gotta keep, let's say, 10K at all times for, you know, buying, well, Essentially, as uh, what's going to happen is, as money comes in, I'm going to buy more cars. Because essentially, I was thinking about waiting to the end of the month, let the money stack up and go out and buy them. But let's say I get my 10 cars, and let's say, because um, this is the assumption. I don't know how this is going to work. Because... Right now, Uber drivers are making a lot of money. And I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon. So, essentially, if I do a car for 50 bucks a day, that's $1,500 a month rental. But that includes insurance. So, if they were to buy a car, they'd be like 600 a month plus 100, like 730. So that's like twice what they would pay if they were buying the car, but you know, I don't really know how that's going to work. Um, this is why I'm buying that first car and getting started with the process so I know how it works. Because let's say I buy five cars and I find out that $50 a day doesn't work. Then I lower it because essentially the best protection plan with higher car, they take 25%. So what I would, you know, cause I want to do 50 cause that would get me $40 a day. But if 50 doesn't work, then I will move it down to um, 40, which means I would get $30 a day. So I don't really know how this is going to work. I have no clue to how this is going to work. Um, I, I, I don't. And this is why I got to get started. I got to get started. Um, when you buy a car, they do emissions, so it's going to pass emissions. I'm going to go ahead and get an oil change. For each car, I'm going to keep a folder because I'm gonna buy the car. I'm gonna put all the purchasing paperwork in it because in a year, I'm gonna sell this car. So I'm gonna do, because essentially, if I sell it, let's say in a year from now, I sell the car for 9,000 plus associated fees and stuff. And I was like, hey, give me $3,000. Okay, or 2,000, 2,000, 3,000. So I sell it for nine and I do a payment plan 
of $400 a month for 24 months. So that's $4,800 a year. That's $9,600 plus the 10, 2,000. That's $11,000 plus if I rent the car the way I want to rent it, it's going to make 4,000. So that's like a 16, $15,000 profit on a $10,000 spend in 36 months. So that's really good return. Very, very good return. If I can pull that off and the numbers change a little bit if I go down to $30 a day, that's gonna be $300 per month less. And you know, we're, we're talking about doing this at scale. This, this is why I wanna have 30 cars for the month of June. Cause June, you know, May, I'm not really gonna count May. Um, Cause May is the acquisition phase to get it started. And then as money comes in, it is my intention to continually buy cars. I sat down for three hours and worked out a 24 month. I worked it out to 2024. So 2022, I feel that I should have a hundred cars. I think by February or March, I have to look at my paperwork. 2022 car you know so that's a, a big milestone because if i have 100 cars and if things go like i said i don't know until i actually get in the marketplace but let's say i got 100 cars times 30 bucks a day that's three thousand dollars a day times 30 that's ninety thousand a month minus 11,000 in insurance, okay? So that's gonna be like $80,000 profit on inventory that is paid off, no financing. So that 100 car mark is gonna be a really big thing. And then essentially what I'm gonna do on the side once I get my dealer's license is I'm gonna buy one car. And I'm gonna flip it, and every time I sell that car, I'm gonna take that money, go to auction, buy another car. And I'm gonna keep flipping that car on the side so I'll learn how to sell cars and do paperwork. Um, this, to me, seems a lot better than going out and getting a car lot. Because um, a car lot, I'm gonna spend 60 to 80K just getting the car lot ready and rent. So, you know, essentially I would have to, you know, what I'm, what I'm researching is cars at the auctions are going at retail or close to retail. So uh, what I'm gonna do, and this is where my storage auction expertise comes in. I know how to shop, I found some deals at some uh, some dealers. There was like a, one vehicle I'm looking for. It only has 101, mi 101 miles on it. I gotta drive it, check it out, make sure it's operational. And then there are other people selling the same vehicle for like three thousand dollars more. So I gotta find some dealers who are struggling to move inventory because this is the thing that people do. When you buy incorrectly, and then you have to sell on price. What do you do? You lower the price to get your money back so you can reload. So uh, th these two cars today, they're not crazy expensive. And essentially, um, I, I have a, a theory. There's, there's some stuff, because like I said, I don't know how Uber XL is going, but I found a vehicle that has third row seats so it can transport six people. Um, Uber XL, 
When I drove for Uber many, many years ago, <clears throat> 2014, right? God, that was seven years ago. Uh, my BMW X5 had third row seats and I could do Uber XL. Uber XL was like 10 to 12 bucks more per ride. And also, because I was able to be on the Uber X app and the Uber XL app oh, simultaneously. So if someone needed, uh, I, I remember I went to this house and picked up six people who were going to the club. So, you know, Uber XL, and this, this comes part of the Craigslist ad. Let's say you get the vehicle that does Uber XL and you do Uber Monday through Friday, regular Uber X, right? And then Saturday you do Uber XL. You can make five or 600 bucks in one day. So if you do that three Saturdays out the month, that pays for your car. And then your Monday through Friday Uber earnings are yours. So, you know, it, it, it's about, um, my ads are gonna be about educating people. Um, and I, I don't know where I'm gonna place them on Craigslist. I don't know, and I don't know with Facebook Marketplace, I got a lot of work to do. I got a lot of work to do. Because essentially, if I can do the 20, 20, uh, two thousand dollar cars just rent them out for 20 bucks a day that's like a six hundred dollar car note which a lot of people can do and if you need your car to get to work and you need to get your money going and just set it up for 150 bucks a week if I can get away with that because once again I got so much to do. I got so much to do because this is why I'm not going to use State Farm as my insurance company. And let's say I do this because essentially the insurance company ain't going to like it because essentially when I went and looked for a rental copy, they, they, Progressive was like, no, all the commercial insurance companies were like, we don't want to do that. Because when you rent your cars out, things are gonna happen. And this is why it is imperative to um, <clears throat> get um, to get um, the higher car, the Turo insurance, because they, they, they've got they're, they've worked out some kind of insurance. They probably have their own insurance company, to be honest with you. They probably do. And let's say I get to the 100 car mark. February, March. Like I said, I got to look at my paperwork, right? And then I realize that I can go out and buy these $2,000 cars, right? And put them on the roads of Atlanta for 20 bucks a day. That would change my business model. I would go out and get a bunch of $2,000 cars. Like, let's say I made $80,000. Every $20,000 gets me 10 cars. So I can go out and get 40 cars, right? Put them on the road as a rentals, 20 bucks a day. 40 times 20 is $800 a day times five is four thousand times a month is twenty thousand dollars uh i i mean you know like i said we're about to get creative because essentially there's a group of people and like let's say I put you out there in the $2,000 car, right? And I was like, hey, build credit with me. You rent this $2,000 car for like say a year, right? Then boom, you've got credit with me because the car's made 50, um, 600, 
7,200 bucks. Then I can like bring you to my buy here, pay here lot. You give me $2,000 and I can put you in the $10,000 car. You can upgrade in a year. No one else is doing this. Um, essentially, uh, I'm going to do credit education. Can't do credit repair in the state of Georgia, but I can do credit education and also sell some more digital products. So, like I said, I got to get started because until I get a car on the platform, I don't really know what's going to happen. I don't know if my pricing scheme is going to work. This is why I got to get started. And this is one of the frustrating things. Fortunately, I can buy 30 cars and run that out of my house. So, because essentially it is a challenge to find office space. It is a challenge right now. A lot of people are starting businesses. Um, there's not a lot of vacancies. So, you know, it is interesting. It is really interesting what's going on in this economy. But one of the things that I have observed is people are still working. Yes, there's um, a bunch of people who don't have a job, which like, all right, let's say you sitting at home, you don't have no job, you don't have no money, you don't have a car that you can do the Uber, then you see one of my ads. You can rent a car to do Uber. And let's say I would charge you by week. So 40 times seven, because it's seven days a week. Or you can rent the car for five days. That's um, 200 bucks. You can rent the car for 200 bucks, 800 bucks a month, drive Monday through Friday for Uber and then take weekends off. So if you got 200 bucks, you can start driving for Uber. I don't know how that interfaces where you rent a car from hire car with Uber, but it, it, hire car is set up for Uber and Lyft drivers. So, you know, once again, I, I don't really know how the numbers are going to work until I get started, until I actually get in the game, until I actually start renting cars. And then I got I to gotta make a bunch of phone calls. I got to um, do some work. I've got to... But essentially, I got 30 cars on the road, and if everything goes horrible, right? So 30 cars is gonna be a 200,000 investment. I'm gonna cap it at 200,000. So at 7,500, you know, that, that's like if the cars are only rented out half the month. Um, they're not really, you know, I, I have a lot of hiccups and mistakes. So 7K a month times 12, 70, it's 84,000. So it would take me, if things remain horrible, which I, I don't really anticipate that, it would take me two years and six months at 7,500 to get my money back. So, you know, 7,500 bucks per month as an accelerary business. Like, like I was just say, I just buy 30 cars. I find out I hate the car business. It ain't working. And I just keep that. I got an extra 7,500 bucks a month coming in. That's an additional revenue stream. So also, like once I get to 100K a month in rental revenue, at that point I could stop 
okay? And I got a $1.2 million a year business just on rentals. So like I said, um, cause I'm going in this with some money, I've seen a lot of people who want to finance cars. Now, here's the, here's the issue with financing. You can only finance so many cars in your name before they're gonna tell you no. Um, Mr. Organic, he's got a Rolls Royce Phantom, a Mercedes, he's got five cars and he, he bought another car and he had to trade in his Porsche to get this other car. So he's capped out at five cars and he has above average income. So the whole financing your cars, you're gonna cap out real quick financing. Whereas I have 200K, I can go buy cash cars. And then since the money isn't gonna be servicing debt, take that money and buy more cars. Let's, let's say um, I get into it, because like I said, I'm going to get my dealer's license. And let's say the car business is going better than anticipated. And I got 50 cars, right? 50 times 40, it's $2,000 a day, uh, times 30, it's like 60K a month, right? So I can take 60K and go out and buy 10 cars and sell them. You know, it just really depends on what's going on and you know also i plan on selling a lot of jeeps jeeps do really well in georgia jeeps do really really well um so there, there's a lot that you guys are going to get to see me do because it really depends upon the information that i get from the marketplace that's the key the information that I get from the marketplace. That, that's, that's the key. Um, because without that information, without that data, I don't really know what's going on. So as I get this information from the marketplace, as um, I build this business out, there are going to be surprises <clears throat> there's going to be information that I'm unaware of. Um, there's going to be, because essentially, if my plan goes accordingly, I should be at 50 cars by October. And let's say I find something else I like to do that's more enjoyable, right? And I just keep those 50 cars and make 60K a month. Um, 50 cars, the insurance is probably going to be like 4,000. So 55,000 bucks a month by October. I'm like, so anyway, even if things don't pan out, because I've had some comments like, um, my margins on are too high, bruh, I've researched this. I have seen dealers here in Georgia currently buy a car at auction for 5,000 and put it on their lot for 10. I've seen that over and over again. So I'm not going to spend $10,000 to make 800. I'm not doing that, bro. That, that makes no sense because, all right, I would have to spend 100K to make $8,000. Um, from a dealership standpoint, having a lot, having insurance, I was essentially, let, let's say I had a lot and I was spending $10,000 on car to make $800 per car. And I sold 30 cars. That's $24,000, right? And my dealer fee, my dealer lot's 5,000, my insurance and stuff, Let's say my overhead's 15K. 
I only made $9,000 profit off of spending 300K? That don't work, man. I'm not doing that. I am not doing that. Because that business model, you, you, you have a lot of problems. And also, once I get my dealer's license, like these $2,000 cars, right? I can have a whole section of buy here, pay here, give me $500 down and pay me um, 200 bucks a week for a year. That's 2,400. So I've already rented the car and I've already got the 2,000 back. And then I've created a buy here, pay here where you can put $500 down roll out $200 a month payment. So I've made, let's say, $2,000 car, I rent it out for six months. So six times, it's 3,600, so I made 1,600. Give me that 500, I made um, 2,000, and then I make another 2,400 on the back end. So this $2,000 car has made me $4,000 in a year, in, in 18 months. Because one of the things I'm not gonna do is, uh, I'm not gonna do three year payment plans. Uh, the most I'm gonna do is 24 months. Um, I might, on the more expensive cars, like I started getting to $20,000 cars, right? I would probably go out to a three-year payment plan on those. And a $20,000 car, let's say about a $20,000 car, and I rent it out. I, I, got, I gotta really see how that's gonna work. Because um, a $20,000 car at auction is like a $25,000 car. So, I would have to rent that car for a hundred bucks a day. In, let's see, I, I have to do some research on that. But essentially, I would have to, that car would have to earn $3,000 a month or $2,000 a month for 10 months. So 2,000, let me see, $20,000 car. $2,000 divided by 30. Oh, okay. So I can rent out a $20,000 car for 66 bucks a day. So I could rent out this car cause like at these levels of cars at this point, what I would do when I get to that point is I would get me a partner to be the designatee who can sign up for Toro. And then I would rent that car out for 10 months on Toro, then bring it to my buy here, pay here. And like, Hey, you gotta put, you gotta put $5,000 down and then we'll do uh, finance to 15 and essentially I plan on buying some nice cars like um, let's take the Jeep if I got a Jeep for 20,000 put it on Turo I think Jeeps do 125 a day so if that car is rented out half the month um, yeah then I can bring that Jeep to my buy here, pay here. And Jeeps at a buy here, pay here will fly off the lot. They will fly off the lot because everyone loves Jeeps. Um, Jeeps are really, really popular here in Georgia. So that that's another part of the business model because I can have 100 cars on um, hire car and I can have 30 cars on Turo and then I, I'll be selling cars on my used car lot. So higher cars, stream of income, Turo stream of income, 
car lot, another stream of income. Like I said, uh, I've worked out the numbers for 2024, high side. So I can cut those numbers in half. It's still beautiful. It's still beautiful. It is still beautiful. So that's all I got for you guys. And we'll see you in the next one.